A long time ago, Steve Rogers was taken by Eliza Sinclair. She promised the young man that his mother was fine. She just had a bump on her head and needed to go away and rest for a while. The woman told Rogers that he was going to have to be strong in the days to come. He was going to a special place, somewhere the young man could find his destiny. The days ahead would be dangerous and scary, but if Rogers did everything Eliza told him to, she promised he would see his mother again. She takes the boy to two men, Daniel Whitehall and Dr. Sebastian Fenhall. They greeted the young man cordially and invited him inside. There was much to discuss. In the present, the Red Skull carries out a clandestine mission in Sokovia. As Hydra moves to act, Rogers is busy elsewhere at a party with the superheroes, who are celebrating a recent victory over a rogue celestial from another dimension. There, Steve Rogers first learns of the boy Ulysses. This news is upsetting to both he and Dr. Selvig. Already they have a loose end out there in the form of the still injured Jack Flagg. Ulysses' premonitions could easily expose Rogers and his plans. So, Captain America reluctantly agreed with Selvig to kill the young Inhuman. What else can he do? However, when he infiltrates the city of Adelan, he is surprised to see Tony there, who manages to kidnap Ulysses. Rogers is thus unable to kill the young man. Instead, he comes up with a new idea. Ulysses seems to predict threats to the Inhuman's own survival and global catastrophes. There's a sense of priority within his brain. So they just need to create bigger threats and a distraction to keep all the heroes busy and away from Rogers. Thus, he asks Selvig a question. How much does he know about gamma radiation? Not long after this, Dr. Bruce Banner gets a letter with a USB card. This anonymous message says the drive contains information on a promising new cure for gamma radiation. And, well, what happened next was only natural. Death distrust, rage, and then war. It's in our blood. It's our weakness. It comes so easy because hate, hate is natural. Later, Rogers got a message from Carol Danvers explaining how they arrested a woman named Allison Green, predicted to be directly responsible for a planned attack by Hydra on the world's financial institutions. There's only one problem with this. Hydra has no such plans, and Rogers would know. He's even able to confirm this with the Red Skull, who is all but certain they are mistaken in this arrest. Rogers has an additional command which surprised Steve. He was to do no harm to Ulysses. Instead, the Red Skull ordered Rogers to side with Carol Danvers, or, if her crusade seems doomed, Tony Stark, and, in the fallout of the all but certain upcoming war, capture Ulysses for Hydra's own nefarious purposes. The Inhumans' unique powers could prove most useful, indeed. In the past, Dr. Fenhoff was unhappy with the young Rogers joining their program. He was small, diseased, weak, no better than typical gutter trash. Eliza insisted otherwise, and after some coercion, she was able to secure the young man a chance. But he would get no special treatment. As far as Whitehall was concerned, Rogers would face challenges like any other of the children in the program, so the only way he could survive would have to be by his own merits. Rogers has a plan, a way to bring peace and order to a broken world. But this is a very complicated, dangerous place we all live in. It loves chaos. So why is he surprised to learn that the world has plans of its own? Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Captain America Steve Rogers number 5. So, holy crap, this comic was crazy. What an amazing issue. This is definitely the sort of tie-in content I was hoping for with this series when it came to Civil War 2, and unlike last issue, that's exactly what we got here. The revelations were all interesting and quite unexpected, too. We already knew Rogers played an instrumental part in this war coming to a head, but now... Well, now we see how big that role really is, and my god, the whole thing with Banner really surprised and delighted me. Because these were the sorts of things I was hoping for when we have a Hydra supporting Captain America. To top things off, we get a lot of interesting knowledge and tidbits about what Rogers does and doesn't know. 
the whole thing with that woman that was arrested is kind of interesting. It adds to the mystery of Ulysses and deepens the Civil War II story. All told, it kind of becomes a must-read for the tie-in, at least as much as these tie-ins ever get to be to a must-read status for an event. I'm sure you could enjoy Civil War II with but I actually think you're kind of worse off for not reading it. It adds enough to the story that it's great and worth doing so. The series still isn't perfect, not that that's a huge deal. Nothing's perfect, but this run does have problems. I still think Nick Spencer's trying to do a lot at once, and perhaps too much. All those plot lines introduced last issue are still dangling around in the background of this thing, and in my opinion, are kind of dragging the story down. These flashbacks don't feel all that necessary either. We already know that these are false memories to inform the current Captain America and his unapologetic Hail Hydraness, but I don't really see the point of us going back to this time period over and over again. I feel by now we get it. Maybe they're leading to some extra twist that I haven't seen yet. I have a feeling that's what's going on here, but it's not super exciting, when meanwhile everything else in this comic is. But these are small problems in an otherwise excellent read. Once again, the art team does a commendable job here and deserves great heaps of praise for their designs of facial expressions and the use of color. And the story really works for me. When the heroes find out about this, and I'm pretty sure they will find out about Cap sooner or later at this point, it's going to be hard for them to forgive Steve Rogers. Yes, he was transformed by a sentient cosmic cube, but lines were crossed that will not so easily be taken back. I hope they don't gloss over this thing like what they did with Superior Spider-Man or Iron Man. I would really like them to get into these consequences. Because when we think about it, could they ever really forgive Rogers for what he did to Banner, now that we know and have seen how directly a role he had in all this? Should they? I don't know. There are no easy answers, I'm afraid. So this comic gets a gold star in storytelling for adequately challenging the reader, which, looking back over the last five issues, seems to fit the series as a whole. I like how this story keeps pushing boundaries, and the controversy from the first big twist that we all know about now really feels validated when the series does cool stuff like what happened here. It's good to have people upset. That means you're making waves. <laughs> So let the upset fans moan and groan and passive-aggressively snipe at Nick Spencer on Twitter. Who cares? I'm enjoying this. I recommend this. You should check it out. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.